Hey everyone, I wanted to show a little preview of my new tutorial about painting a female figure from reference. And instead of showing like a sped up two or three minute trailer, I wanted to actually show a real time section of the tutorial where I'm talking about painting the face. So you can get a little preview of what the tutorial is about, and uh, if you like it, then you can go ahead and check out my Gumroad for the full video. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Alright, so I'm going to start a new layer again just in case I mess up. I don't want to to you know, redo stuff. So some of my, my colors and values are a little bit too dark and um, you know kind of the wrong color so I need to go in and just start refining these colors a little bit more. You know I think they're a lot lighter and probably not as saturated as I have it here. I'm going to start off by blocking in some of this hair So for the hair, I'm, I'm trying to break it up into different planes. So there's this lighter brown plane here, and then it kind of shifts and turns down into this darker brown. So when you're painting hair, you always want to make sure to, you know, paint it in these different planes and kind of group it into different shapes. You don't want to go and try and paint every single little strand of hair. And I would also try and stay a little bit looser as well. A lot of people tend to have really hard edges when they're painting hair. And hair is always a good spot where you can lose some of your edges a little bit and you know, have some softer edges. I mean, once you have some of these planes in, then you can start going in and refining the shapes and colors a little bit more and you know maybe pulling out a few other little strands of hair. So the same thing with the face, I'm going to break it up into these different planes. Like the forehead is one plane, and then when it kind of shifts and turns, uh, it's going to be another plane. You know, my shapes are all kind of messed up from when I just blocked this in, so I need to go and, and fix these shapes. And my shadow needs to be a lot darker. So I'm going down to the shadow layer and making these darker here. And then these cast shadows um, can show the folds that are here, you know, without having to paint the folds in the light area. And you just paint the cast shadow, you can see it. I also don't want these cast shadows to be too hard edged, they're still a little bit soft. Alright, so I'm actually going to rotate the image for when I paint this face because um, it's always kind of weird painting a face sideways. It's just a lot easier, you know, since we usually look at people from this angle. I'm making another layer. I'm going to start off by painting the shadow side. I usually start with the eyes as well. Yeah, I'm trying to be pretty loose and a little bit more painterly with this. Yeah, I don't want to get too bogged down in all the details. So, I mean, right now it looks pretty messed up. And, you know, that's usually how paintings are whenever you start them. You know, they always go through this really ugly phase. And you just have to have confidence in yourself that it's going to look better in the end. I mean, I always get really frustrated when I'm working on a painting because I have to go through that ugly phase. And, you know, it just makes me feel like my painting is crap and I don't want to actually finish it or work on it. So I always end up having to go through that, like, every painting I do. Which can definitely be frustrating. You know, I want to make sure that these shadows stay saturated too. So you can see I, I broke the forehead into like three different planes. You know, there's that really light one kind of on the side of her head and then 
the a little bit darker pink in the main part of the forehead and then the shadow part. And like all this area around her mouth is all really dark, not to make that a lot lighter. And flip my image. Now for some reason it's a lot easier for me to paint faces that are going in this direction, you know, when they're pointing to the left. Uh, whenever they're flipped, it, for some reason, I don't know why, it's just it's harder for me to, to paint in that direction. Like, especially if I'm doing physical drawings, like, if I have to flip my image and paint the face paint, pointing to the right, and for some reason I always have a lot more difficulty doing it in that direction. Over here on the jaw, there's some of these uh, cooler, more desaturated colors. You know, like that shadow under the nose is getting a little bit too desaturated. I'll have to go and fix that. Same with that nose, you know, it's getting too dark, so I need to make that lighter. I think there's a little bit too much space here on the side of her head, so I need to bring her hairline down a little bit more. Yeah, around the hairline too, I would try and leave that a little bit softer, maybe have a little bit of like a cast shadow just to make it look like the hair isn't pasted on. I think there's another thing I see a lot of people doing is they have this really hard edge hairline and it just kind of looks like the hair was pasted on. <laughs> Her mouth area <laughs> looks really funny right now because I haven't painted it. The nostril as well, I, was all, I would also make sure that you leave that really saturated. That's another area where people tend to just do like solid black and it always makes it look like they have this pig nose or something. So you can already see that I'm kind of running out of room because the head is kind of a little bit too low and angled at a different angle than the reference. It's so like the mouth. Um, it kind of barely fits in here, and I'm not going to really be able to fit the chin in very well either. I'm probably going to have to go and move that and flip my image again. And it's good to look at your painting from different angles because you can see your mistakes a lot more easily. So for edge control, the corner of the mouth is always a really good area where you can have a softer edge. And for the lips, I would make sure that you don't do too hard of an edge there either. That's another thing, or another area where I see a lot of people doing like really sharp, hard edge lips. And again, they look kind of pasted on, kind of like hair, whenever they make it really hard edged. So like the sharpest edges I would have would be, you know, where the the mouth is, like where the lips come together, the dark area. But the actual contour outside of the lips, I would make sure that those stay a lot softer. I'm trying to shove this chin in here, but I'm kind of running out of room. I'm 
get a little bit lighter, a little bit more saturated with the shadow side. I might have to make the the cast shadow darker. It's all kind of blending together right now. So yeah, this this part here is where you can have the harder edge with the lips that I was talking about. I think my proportions got off a little bit on this face. I feel like the length of her nose might be a little bit short. And some of the angles are a little bit off, like the angle of like the eyes. I need to start blocking in this ear too. I've got a little bit small, so I need to make that a little bit bigger. So the ear, I'm going to go a lot more saturated. I mean, you can tell in the reference, there's a lot more of that red saturation there in the ear. So right there, I was trying to line up where the bottom of the ear lines up on the face. And, you know, you can see that it totally does not line up correctly. So I'm like kind of trying to compare some of my angles, like the angle of the arm is off and then the, the angle of the face is totally off. So it's kind of screwing up uh, where these things should be going. I'm going to copy my layer and I'm going to move this head. Actually, you know what, I think I'm going to move the arm and the head at the same time. I need to move it up more. I probably should rotate it. And rotate this hand. So now I need to go below on the other layer and erase it out. And since these are all on different layers. I, mean, I guess I probably should have rotated her face too a little bit. I think my angle is a little bit off. Alright, so now I have some more room to put her chin in here. I can also get that ear in there now too. It's kind of like down to the middle of her nose. And make this shadow a little darker too. Now I can line up that ear, see where the bottom part lands. And that means I gotta move the hair over too. So I can just break.
break it up into these big shapes. And don't worry about individual strands of hair right now. You know, now that I'm looking at this uh, up closer, you know, I'm seeing a lot of things that are kind of off a little bit. You know, I think her head might be getting a little too wide and like the angle of the arm is a little different. Uh, same with like the back, you know, this part right here where it kind of goes in and comes back out. You know, mine is up way too high. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that I'll have to go and kind of move around a little bit, uh, especially like the face over here. So I'm going to merge this down. I'm going to copy this, oops, in case I want to go back to it or if I screw up or something. Alright, so I think I need to move some of this stuff. Alright, so I was working on the ear earlier, I'll go back and Finish that up a little bit since I didn't really finish it. I noticed a lot of people tend to kind of leave the ear like really loose and they don't really paint it very much. Yeah, I wouldn't um, you know intentionally leave an ear unfinished. I actually like painting ears. I don't know if people just think they're not important or if they think they're hard to paint. I'm not really sure, but I've noticed it with a lot of people. Yeah, I'm not going to go too detailed with it, but I'm going to render it, you know, just a little bit so it doesn't look unfinished. You know, like this hairline, you know, I would, you know, make sure it's fairly soft. You can kind of see some of the scalp in you know, between this hair here, which will help kind of blend the two together so it doesn't look like your hair is too pasted on or anything. And again, I would leave a lot of these edges fairly soft, especially around the hairline there. And once you have some of these basic shapes, then you can start going in and pulling out some you know, other strands and stuff. And maybe start trying to detail a little bit out a little bit more. Maybe put like some highlights in here. I'm probably not going to go too crazy with the hair either, though. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of leave it fairly loose. I 
you maybe pull a few strands out and like some of these stray hairs over here oops and make a new layer so I can put some over the ear Some of her chin got messed up when I copied it and moved it. So I'll just fix a few of those areas. Some of my shadows in here might be getting a little dark. I can lighten some of those up a little bit more. Thanks for watching this short preview of my new tutorial. If you want to see the full video, you can visit my Gumroad at gumroad.com slash darken. Thanks.